tell i just wanted to show my new chair off yeah sorry so welcome to the channel if you're new here my name is liam i'm one half of deploymentzone.tv and i know i know i didn't do a video last week i'm sorry i'm sorry for everyone who asked me where the video was but i had a week's leave off of actual work last week and um it wasn't really a week's leave because i completely renovated my garage into a studio um not this room this is the same office that I work in normally but for filming and stuff I'll see if I can stick a picture up somewhere of the studio um, uh, as it is now which is still a little bit of a work in progress but it's mostly finished and I'm super happy with how it's turned out it looks really nice and hopefully people like myself and Brom can get in there soon and start filming some more games for you wonderful people so that's very exciting it was a horrific week off stupidly busy um, at the same time in the evenings I was exhausted every night and we were drinking beer just to settle myself down so I'm very sorry that I didn't do a video last week but it was a week off for me and that was quite nice so that brings us to this week and I was very lucky to receive a nice little parcel from Games Workshop and I got this the Drakari Codex which I'm not going to cover um, because everybody that got both of these books predominantly focused on covering the Drakari Codex and um, I don't know anything about Drakari so it would be really pointless me reviewing this book. It's one of the very few factions in 40k that I quite literally know nothing about or very, very little about in terms of rules. I definitely didn't read their 8th edition codex, so I don't feel like I can compare the 9th edition one. I have heard lots of stories about it being quite a good book, quite a strong book, quite a powerful book, which is great. Um, but if you want to see a Codex Drakari review, head on over to Winters' YouTube channel. Um, I'll link it below. He did a short review on YouTube. He did an in-depth review on DeploymentZone.tv, and you can sign up using the link below and go and watch his in-depth Drakari review. So he's covered that. He's covered Drakari. What I want to cover is this. Uh, Warzone Caradon, I think. Uh, Act 1, The Book of Rust. I want to cover this book, and I want to cover why, for me, it's Marmite. Uh, and what I mean by that is I have a love-hate relationship with this book. So some of you will have seen Games Workshop talking about this on the community page and our social media channels and stuff, and I didn't know whether I was going to like it or not. Uh, because it's an additional book and I am very 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 keen to come away from loads of additional books but I want to clarify something very very quickly before I go into a little bit more depth in this book and that is that I want to come away from tens and tens of books just to play your core rules so I don't necessarily care about having extra books for campaigns or extra books for narrative type things within your games of 40k. I just care about tons and tons of books just to play your basic army. So if you are an Eldar player or a Space Marine player or a Chaos player and you need sort of four or five books just to put the force that you want to put on the table on the table, I think that's really negative. And unfortunately they've done that with this book. And that's where I'm going to have a whinge. Uh, but also they've done some campaign stuff in this book. And I had a read through it in depth. And actually, that's really good. And that's where I'm kind of now in a Marmite, love it or hate it relationship with this book. With Act 1, Warzone Caradon. Now, I do think that maybe COVID has something to do with this. But I think their timing is absolutely horrific. And I say that because there are rules in this book for... Um, specific ways to run armies and some sort of supplements for how you run uh, like a faction like a like a sort of chapter or a craft world or a cult if you're a dragari player for example and it came through at the same time as this book so why would games workshop give me rules for the cult of strife for dragari in this book which is two pages i think it's like three warlord traits three relics and some data cards or some stratagem sorry when well, they could just put it in here that screams of money grabbing. There's also ways to run your D Death Guard now um, as a Terminus Assault Force, which is a infantry heavy Typhus Plague, uh, Plague Pox Walker, not Plague Walker, Pox Walker type army. And there's a whole new Nurgle Psychic Discipline. And you can use these rules in match play games without you having to be doing part of this campaign. So why isn't that in the Death Guard Codex? 
four extra pages. Why isn't it in the Death Guard Codex? That stinks of money grabbing, just like the Kill Team box set. Uh, and I'm not happy about that, and I don't think that's okay. Now, at this stage of releases for 9th edition, I think that they maybe could have put other rules in this book, which would have been acceptable. So perhaps they would have known that at the end of the of the Codex releases, we were going to see Eldar and Imperial Knights and another, uh, I don't know, Admech, for argument's sake. And maybe if they were the rules that were in this book to give you some, some little extras to tide you over until your Codex comes out, and then when your Codex comes out, you incorporate those rules in that book... I'd be totally okay with that. I'd be totally okay with having, say, Craftworld Slime Han rules in this book, because I play Craftworld Slime Han, that give me extra rules for running Craftworld Slime Han for 9th edition in the new sort of 9th edition style. But then when the Eldar Codex comes out at perhaps the end of the release schedule for Codexes, knowing that it's going to be one of the last ones, they incorporate those rules in the book so that I can still just take my Eldar Codex and I have everything I need. I think I'd be okay with that. I don't think I'd have a problem with that. To bring out rules for Death Guard and Drakari, Drakari at the same time as Death Guard, uh, uh, sorry, at the same time as the Codex, and Death Guard shortly after the Codex has come out, I just think that's a bit of a dick move, and I'm not okay with that. I just, there's no need to do that. And when I say there's no need to do that, I am considering and taking into account the fact that this rule book, this, this, this narrative expansion, this campaign book, also includes ways of running a campaign. So if we go into the main section of the book for rules, we have the Obelis, Obelis invasion campaign, and they talk about players and alliances and how you al uh, how you set up your alliances between your group of players. They talk about a campaign master, which is essentially like a dungeon master if you're a D&D &D player. He's a guy that sort of pulls the strings and decides the matchups and stuff like that. They talk about how the allies work. They talk about campaign length. They go into war zone points and how you win specific points depending on the mission size. So if you are a player that plays a strike force game against your opponent in the first phase of the campaign, there's three phases in total, and you win that mission, you get four points for war zone points for your alliance for your faction's alliance so at the end of the phase the faction or the alliance with the most war zone points they win that phase of the campaign and then there's the points reset and they move into phase two and then there's campaign victory for strategic value points at the end of the phases and at the end of the phase at the end of phase three you add up all your campaign victory points your strategic value points and you work out who won the campaign there's loads of twists and stuff they've added so they have things like irritated irritated yeah, Irradiated Wastelands, and you can do twists on your missions based on the fact that the, the Wastelands are Irradiated for Phase 1. Phase 2, they have a Metallican Redoubt-type rules. There's Ascendancy of Entropy for Phase 3, which is where the Death Guard are starting to take hold of the planet. And this campaign runs along the narrative, and I have to say, personally, reading these rules and these traits, this is done beautifully well. I think this is genuinely brilliant. Um, I like the fact that it's broken into three phases. I like the fact that they allow you to use standard rulebook missions, either open, narrative, or match play, and they give you ways in which you can incorporate each into the campaign. So if you're doing narrative play, you can go along with the Crusade rules as well as playing this campaign. So heroes can be born for your Admech, heroes can be born for your Death Guard, and in fact, when they talk about the alliances, they basically give a reason for any faction to be there. So you and a group of four, five, six friends can all get together and play this campaign, and despite as long as you have sort of a relatively even spread, if you have six Imperial players, it doesn't kind of work. But as long as you have a relatively even spread across the campaign, anyone can take part in this. That's really good. That's really well thought out. I remember narrative missions in the past and specific supplements would tell you that you had to take specific types of unit or specific units in your army. This doesn't do that. It doesn't give you those restrictions. It gives you additional rules for Crusade. It gives you extra Crusade relics. It gives you extra Crusade uh, agendas and stuff like that to do brilliant it gives you secret orders where the games master or whatever the campaign master they've called him in this can chuck in a special order in a specific mission to give people additional points to keep the balance quite nice there's legendary missions so there's three specific missions that the campaign master can chuck in there and i've read through them and they're all pretty good they're very narrative missions really narrative driven missions one of them is about escaping the enemy one of them is about scattered forces everywhere really really genuinely well done and I think it's brilliant, and I genuinely mean I think it's brilliant. There's ways to gain requisition points. So if you've come third at the end of the um, 
at the end of that phase, you gain additional requisition points for your army. This is if you're playing Crusade, obviously, and you can use requisition points to bolster your forces and stuff. Uh, you get experience points dependent, and there's ways to dish out experience points, and there's, there's ways that they encourage the campaign master to dish out experience points. You don't have to follow that. You can do your own thing. And then we go on to missions, and there's very specific styles of missions. So the route on Akarium gives you a bit of narrative, and it's about how the defenders are having to back off to their table edge and the attackers are trying to cut them off as they retreat and it's a fighting retreat there's a, there's additional objectives in here this is a campaign book is so good i think and i think a little bit meat a little bit more meat in that campaign book and don't add faction specific rules in for the current armies that have codexes coming out as this book is coming out games workshop and this would be nothing but a positive review. And I would encourage anyone who wants to play narrative and play campaigns who sometimes maybe lacks that bit of imagination to come up with the campaigns themselves to pick this book up. I'd love to play this with Brom through Crusade. I mean, it's Imperium versus Death Guard and we don't really have Imperium and Death Guard at the moment to play on the channel. I mean, we've got Imperium, but we don't have Death Guard, but I'm sure we could... We could probably put something together for this if we're doing smaller missions. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to make promises yet. But I'd love to play through this campaign with him because I think it's really narrative and it tells a story. And it means you can follow a story and follow a campaign and you can play it a couple of times and have different results, which is really, really, really good and really well thought out. Um, like I said, there's three different missions. Each of these legendary missions are for each of the phases. So in phase one, if you have four games across all of your friends, three of you can play a normal mission. One of you might get given a legendary mission by the campaign master. Ultimately, ultimately you could all four of you play the legendary mission if you so wish. You don't have to do that. And there's lots of stuff in here that basically says, this is what we suggest you do, but you do what you want to have fun and build your campaign and I am totally for that. Uh, phase two, the legendary mission is flied, uh, Flood, Tide and Fathom. And there's actually a tide that rises throughout the game. And you can do actions to either raise or lower that tide. So if you are the Imperium and you're trying to lower that infected tide by pumping water out. And you do actions to do that. And the Death Guard are trying to obviously make it more infested. Amazing. I genuinely think this is top, top notch. And I honestly, honestly would happily pay for this as a campaign book. Uh, the actual campaign rules, the missions, the way it tells you to lay a campaign out, the additional crusade stuff around that campaign, I'm all for it. And then we come on to this part. And if you can see that on the camera, it says Army Rules. And this was where my heart sunk. And we've already sort of briefly touched on it. But they give you lots of army-specific rules. They talk about armies of renown. They talk about specific supplements. And again, if you're supplementing codexes that aren't out yet or aren't coming out for a while... Cool. Okay. I'm okay with that. I think that's probably a good idea to give those codexes that are still waiting and probably will be waiting for a long time for their new book. It gives them something. But I would only, my caveat for that would be that, like I've said to you already, I would want them to appear in the final codex. I would want them to come out in the final book. Then I'd be okay with them appearing in a campaign book like this, knowing that they come out in the final codex. But they just don't. It's not what happens. And, and these rules. Again, I think I'd be okay with these rules if they were only specifically for the campaign. Then they would make sense. So if you could only take a Mechanicus Defense cohort from this book, if you were playing a campaign from Warzone Charidon, or Charidon, or whatever you want to call it, then, okay, fine, I get the point in having additional rules in here because this is how you're going to build your force for this campaign. Totally for that. I think that's okay as well. I have not really got a problem with that. But you're going to give me specific rules that I can play in any mission? Games Workshop keep responding to comments on social media of people that are complaining about it being multiple books saying they're totally optional, they're totally optional. But ultimately, if you're going to release rules that make a person, an individual's armies better and stronger, they're going to want to use those rules. And it's a bit remiss of you to think genuinely that people are going to go, oh, it's loads of strong rules, but I don't want other books, I'm not going to buy it. They want the rules. And I know we're in this real strange Catch-22 situation where lots of people are probably screaming at the screen right now and dropping comments below that are saying, yeah, but Liam, they are optional. You don't need to have them. So people that want those are clearly just power gamers. It's not the case. Because perhaps these rules are allowing you to run your force in a narrative way that you want to run your force. And why should you not have that option to run it that way in your army's codex? That's the point of a codex, right? It allows you to run your army in a way, in a manner that you want. So by sticking them in here and allowing them to be used in any game of 40k, I, I'm not for that. 
I wonder actually genuinely if tournament organisers are going to say actually any formation that comes out, because it's kind of what it is, it's almost like a formation, any formation that comes out in a campaign book that isn't in an army's codex or specific supplement, i.e. chapter uh, chapter ultramarines or whatever, then we're not going to allow it. If you're a tournament organiser, comment below, let me know. Would you happily allow all of these rules in your events, knowing that they're from campaign supplement books? Or are you going to put a blanket, no, you're not using them? Or are you going to have to assess each book as it comes? Super interested to know what you're saying about that. People like Pardo from SN, comment below. I want to know what your thoughts are on these, because ultimately you're getting more rules, more stratagems, more warlord traits, more relics for an army, and it's making it stronger. So we have a Mechanicus defense cohort. Essentially, a defense cohort is an army of renown, and it allows you to do extra stuff with your mechanical with your mechanicum essentially it, it tells you you can't take scutari so it's just for admech units not for scutari units and there's loads of bonuses that they get and extra stuff that they can do um then we go on to codex supplement metallica again if i didn't think for one minute that admech codex was right around the corner i think this is a real po a positive boost a specific faction within um admech i.e metallica and give someone some rules because they might be waiting till october for their codex cool absolutely go ahead or say specifically that actually this campaign revolved around forge world metallica so we're going to give you extra rules for forge world metallica in this book but they're only for this campaign or for that that's fine sticking them in here so anyone can take them there are people out here so there's three warlord traits there's one two three four relics there's one page of stratagems which are eight stratagems there are people out there who are going to buy this book for three pages of rules and that's why this is a dick move. Because people that are Metallica mad, maybe they've they've played Metallica as a forge world forever, and they want to have specific Metallica narrative rules. They want to have specific Metallica narrative wall or traits and relics, and more options than they get in their Admet Codex. They're going to buy this book for three pages of rules. That's not okay. Not okay at all. Because they won't want the campaign stuff. They might just be going to friendly events. They don't want the the um, Imperial Knight stuff, the Freeblade stuff, they don't want the Death Guard stuff, they just want that Codex Metallica stuff. That's why I have a problem with these books, and that's why I think this is a poor choice. And I said this throughout 8th edition, when Games Workshop released campaign books that have rules in them that you can use for your faction in any version of 40k, not just for that specific campaign book, I don't think that's okay. And some people are going to say to me, oh yeah, well, okay, if you've got Imperial Knights, and you've got Admech, and you've got Death Guard, and you've got Drakari, this is a really great book, because you get loads of rules. But is that supremely common that people are going to be collecting all four of these armies? I'd suggest not. When people make that comment, really think about it. If you're that person that's saying, well, I've got all four of those armies, I'm great. Do you genuinely think that you're in the majority? I don't think you are. I, I genuinely don't think you are. I don't think there's many people that can honestly say they have all four of those armies and they are excited about all these specific rules. And if they do have all four of those armies, are they going to want Cult of Strife specifically? And are they going to want uh, Metallica specifically? Probably not. I would imagine. So that's where I have a problem with this. When you're having, when you're forcing people, and you're not, they're not, okay, okay, before you scream at me, I get that they're not strictly forcing you to buy this book. But if you want access to all of your faction's rules to be able to play the army that you want to play, narratively in some instances, i.e. Forge World Metallica, then you are forced to buy an additional book to have access to all those rules. That's a fact. You, you have to buy all those books to get access to all those rules. If you don't buy all those books, and you're right, you don't have to buy those books, you don't get access to all of that faction's rules. And the whole point in the Codex is it gives you the rules you need to run your faction. So it annoyed me a lot. They talk about free blade lances. Again, I reiterate, if the Imperial Knight Codex doesn't come out for ages, then fine. But I bet it comes out, it doesn't have any of these rules in it when it comes out, which means you still need this book if you're going to run a free blade lance of complete free blades, which is a dick move. It's got the Terminus S Assault Force. So we have uh, rules around uh, Death Guard. There's Warlord Trait, singular. There's four extra stratagems. There's some additional rules about strategic reserves and, and outbreak assaults, which basically means it's cheaper for you to stick your stuff in reserve. And when you do, you can deep strike in rather than having to walk on from bold edges. as a whole new psychic discipline. If only we had a new Death Guard codex that came out recently that we could put this psychic discipline in. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Um, and there's a page of relics as well. Um, so there's four pages four pages of Death Guard rules. If you're a Death Guard player who's just got your new Death Guard codex and you're super excited about putting your list together, you now, if you want access to every rule, you now have to buy another book to have four pages of Death Guard rules, even if you have no interest in playing the campaign. Not okay. 
Uh, and then the biggest bugbear for me was that this book came through at the exact same time as the Drakari Codex, and Drakari have three pages of rules like Admex. So there's three Warlord traits, there's four relics, and there is a page of stratagems, just like Admech. So three additional pages of rules, three additional pages of rules, and they couldn't squeeze that in this book. I mean, it's not a Space Marine book, right? So it's already half the size of the Adeptus Astartes Codex, and they couldn't squeeze three more pages in here for use in this campaign. No, of course they couldn't, because then they'd only sell you one book if you're a Drakari player. They wouldn't sell you two, would they? And that's why they've done it. And when you read the campaign narrative, and I think this is probably the piece, excuse me, this is probably the piece that pisses me off the most. When you read the campaign rules in this book, the campaign is the Admech defending a planet against the Death Guard. Imperium defending against Death Guard. And it talks about alliances, and it talks that if you've got the Imperium keyword, you're a defender and you're the Defender's Alliance because you're helping the Admech defend against Death Guard. And if you've got the Chaos keyword, then you're the attacker of the planet because it's the Chaos, it's Typhus's grand plan to attack the Forge World. That's what the campaign says, that's what the campaign states. And then when it talks about anything that's not that's not in those two factions, it says if you are not Chaos keyword or not Imperium keyword, then you're a raider. So the Dark Eldar don't really have a supremely active part in the narrative for this campaign. And I'm sure in the pages of narrative that supersede the actual rules, which I haven't got around to reading yet because I've been super busy, I'm sure in these pages of narrative they probably talk about the Drakari somewhere. That seems like it's been shoehorned in, just so they can use the excuse to stick three extra pages of narrative, not extra pages of narrative, three extra pages of rules in this book so they can sell Drakari players a codex for whatever the cost of a codex is nowadays, 25, 30 quid, and a campaign book at the same time. Yeah, that's a horrible trick to play on the fans and supporters of 40k. The people that pay Games Workshop's wages, keep that company afloat and continue to help it grow into the behemoth it is. Careful, careful Games Workshop, but you don't bleed your customer base dry and then your business collapses because of it. So this is not the way to go. To be clear, the campaign stuff in this book... 100% the way to go for me. I'm I'm super excited about it. I'd love to give it a try. Like I said, narrative missions, ways to guide campaign masters, essentially dungeon masters, ways to guide campaign masters through creating and managing campaigns. That got me supremely excited. So, depending on what you want this book, depends on whether I think it's worth the money or not. If you want it just for a specific faction set of rules, it's not worth the money. It's just not three pages in a book for Death Guard. It's not worth the money. Four pages for Death Guard, three pages for Drakari. Not worth the money. I think it's a complete waste of money. And if that's the only reason why you want it, I'd encourage you to not. And the rules are good. They're not insanely broken, but they are pretty good, which makes it tough because you want the best rules available to your army, right? To put your, your faction together. If you're a Death Guard player who wants to run vehicles like Plague Burst Crawlers, don't pick this book up at all because it's focused around Typhus and it's focused around infantry only and zero vehicles to, to run the uh, the Typhus assault, Terminus assault, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, you have to take nothing with the vehicle keyword. You can't take anything with the vehicle keyword at all. So if you want to run your vehicles in your Death Guard, don't pick it up. Absolute waste of time. Uh, and the only way you get access to that psychic discipline is by running that specific, I'm going to call it a formation, running that specific formation so it's no good to you. Uh, if you want to run a Real Space Raiders detachment, which is in the new Drakari Codex, which is a new battalion-style detachment for Real Space Raiders, and therefore you want to take Witch Cult and Calibite Warriors and Homunculus Covens, don't pick this book up, because it's just for Cult of Strife and everything has to be Witch Cult. So don't pick this book up if that's what you want to do. Um, so there's reasons not to pick it up if you're specifically looking at just the rules for Drakari or just the rules for Death Guard, don't get me wrong. If, however... You want a cool campaign book that you can play along with a group of friends in, and you're going to, and considering it allows you to use any factions to do this, you do, I think, need at least one Chaos, at least one Imperial faction to make it work, personally. Um, but if that's what you want to do, if you want to run, run the campaign, absolutely worth the money. And loads of Crusade rules to boot. And if you're playing Crusade anyway, you're playing RPG style 40k, you want extra rules, extra things that you can do because you're developing your narrative. And I think that's okay. And I think if, you, if you're playing Crusade or a campaign, one or the other or both, I think you kind of accept the fact that there's loads of books going on. Dungeon Masters have their big boards up and loads of books so that they can take stuff. I think, that's, I think I'm kind of okay with that because I'm not taking it to an event to go and play Crusade normally. I'm playing Crusade, I'm playing a normal sort of tournament edition 40k. I'm, I'm playing, uh, what do they call it, match play at events. So I want to take a codex and a rule book and that be it, right? I don't want to take supplements like this to... 
a, a normal 40k event. But if you're in my garage now playing the campaign of Warzone carried on, um, and, and you want to have all those rules, and you're going to have a, a, a campaign master, I think I think I accept extra books for campaigns. I think that's a good thing. Genuinely think that's a good thing because it expands on the rules that are within the normal 40k rulebook. So. Yeah, that's how I would summarize it. Campaign power, narr- campaign player, narrative player, want to use Crusade rules, want to develop some narrative with some friends, great purchase. Absolutely great little book. Super happy. I hope Act 2 and 3 have similar campaign rules in them. Sticking faction-specific rules that you can use in normal 40k, bad move. I wouldn't, I wouldn't justify purchasing this because of those rules alone, personally. So as I said, it's a love-hate relationship. It's Marmite, this book. I love the campaign rules. I really like the campaign rules. I'm excited to use them. I hate faction-specific rules that can be used in any old match play that are three pages and mean that people have to pay for a book just to get three pages of rules. I'm never okay with that. That's I just don't think that's acceptable personally, and that's not what I would encourage them to do in the future. I would like to encourage them to not do that. And if they're going to include faction-specific rules, I'd like to make them pertinent just to that campaign, like I've already said. So there it is. That's my piece. Like I said, I'm very sorry I haven't reviewed Codex Dracari, but loads of people have reviewed Codex Dracari already. So uh, check out Winters' review on YouTube. Check out his in-depth review on DeploymentZone.tv. Talking of which, you can go and subscribe to DeploymentZone.tv below. Uh, There is a link below this video. Um, And the amazing play on Tabletop have got episode one of their Crusade campaign live on the the website right now. Um, And I've watched it and it's amazing and I can't wait for episode two. It's a 12-part series exclusive to DeploymentZone.tv. So go on, on, head on over there and sub to to the website and you can watch the play on Tabletop campaign. It is brilliant. And other ways you can support the channel, I will link below this video links to Element Games, the Drakari Codex, and for Acts 1, the Book of Rust, um, because I still think the Book of Rust is worth picking up, like I said, for a campaign. If you're a Drakari player, you're definitely going to want this codex anyway. Um, and that is an affiliate link, so it directly supports the channel. Uh, every purchase you make through that affiliate link directly financially supports DeploymentZone.tv and therefore me and Winters. So thank you very, very much for all those people that have been using that link recently. You guys are amazing. Don't forget, you can also click on the merchandise page on the DGTV website and click through to Element Games there and you will find all the DGTV dice and loads of people have been buying dice. You guys are also amazing. So that's ways that you can support the channel. Like I said, the best way to support us is to subscribe to DZTV. You can also join our Patreon community and, and subscribe on Patreon should you choose to, and you get access to the DeploymentZone.tv community. If you're a DZTV subscriber, you get access to the free area anyway, but if you are a patron, you get access to all the rest of the of the Discord community, and it's pretty large now. It's pretty huge. So you can choose to support us in a multitude of different ways, whichever suits you. Otherwise, you can just keep watching these videos, keep hitting that subscribe, like, thumbs up button, and that supports me as well. So... You can do something, even if it is just clicking like and making sure you subscribe to the channel. So thank you very much, everyone, for your support so far. I hope you guys are, so far, having a better 2021 than 2020 was. Honestly, I hope that. I feel like it's getting better. I feel like some some joy coming back to the world. A little bit, tiny bit of joy coming back to the world, slowly but surely, because I think we're slightly closer to being able to play lots more 40k together again. That's the goal, right? That's the goal. Super excited to play this kind of campaign with Brom. That's what I really want to do. That's my end goal at this point. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, a thumbs down. Uh, Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Uh